All right, some buoyancy review. We have a large boat, mass MB, can displace the maximum volume VB. Uh, the boat's floating in a river with water of density row water and is being loaded with steel beams, each of density row steel and volume V steel. The boat owner wants to carry as many steel beams as possible. Describe an, ma uh, maximum number, describe an expression for a maximum number N of steel beams. Okay, um, so we're floating. So we start with FG equals FB, right? Okay, um, now FB is easy. That's a row of the water. The VB, again, that's the maximum volume it can displace. Um, but we're going to be loading it with our maximum number of steel beams. So that's going to be it times G. Okay, um, the FG, okay, um, so the FG is going to be equal to MG. But um, it's not just this mass. It's the mass of that plus the mass of the steel beams. Okay, um, so the mass is going to be MB plus, okay, um, we have the mass of a, one steel beam, let's call that little m, times n, the number of steel beams, right? So that's our total mass, the mass of the boat plus n times the number of steel beams, okay, times g, right, because it's mg. So that's our total m times g, okay? Um, unfortunately, they don't give us this little m here. We have to figure that out. So remember, rho equals m over v, right? Density is mass over volume. Um, and they give us the rho steel, or so m is equal to rho v. So the little m is equal to rho steel v steel. Okay, so our force of gravity is mb plus n rho steel v steel. Okay, that's our total mass times g. And then that's equal to rho water vb times g. Sorry for the handwriting. Okay. Uh, and then you would solve for n. Okay. But again, we're just starting with fg equals fb. All right. That's the important part. All right. Um, another buoyancy question. Um, we're going to skip part a because that's optics. Um, part b, the bubble has volume. We have an air bubble. It's floating up. Okay. It has volume v. Um, Okay, it's going to float up a distance h um, with a final speed vf. Um, derive an expression for the mechanical energy dissipated by drag forces. So drag forces are just something that slows you down. Um, so what it's asking for, it says mechanical energy dissipated by drag forces. Okay, this is a review from uh, last year's physics. Okay, so um, change in energy is equal to work. And the work is equal to force times distance. Okay. Um, now this air bubble, aside from the drag force, we'll come back to that, has gravity acting on it and buoyancy acting on it. Okay. Fb equals rho Vg and Fg equals Mg. Okay. Um, so the change in energy is equal to um, Fb minus Fg. Right, that's the net force there, right? The FB is bigger. It's floating up um, times, well, not D, it's H. That's the distance, is H. Okay? Um, so delta E equals uh, FB is rho water V G minus. Um, so they don't give us the, the mass of the air, and so they give us the density of the air. Um, so we do... Uh, Density is mass over volume. Mass equals density times volume. So this is rho air Vg, okay, um, times H, okay? Um, so if there was no drag force, all of this would become kinetic energy, right? It's speeding up. As it's going up, there's a net force that's speeding up. That would become kinetic energy. But there is a drag force. Um, we're getting some kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is uh, half mv squared, right? Um, so basically, our delta E equals, um, or I should say, our, our delta E, our total delta E is equal to um, our energy from drag plus our kinetic energy. 
Okay, so it's a delta ke plus delta, I don't know, drag. Okay, um, so delta drag is equal to delta e minus delta k. So we have the delta e, right? And the delta k is just one half m vf squared. And remember the m again is a rho air times v. Okay, so we put that in for k and that will give us our answer to part b. All right, um, on to part C. Now let me clear the screen. Um, at a particular instant, one bubble is 4.5 meters below the water surface. Um, what's the absolute pressure of the bubble at this location? So P equals uh, P0 plus rho G H. Okay, it says absolute pressure, so you put atmospheric here. This is PATM. Okay, that's uh, rho water, uh, G we know, and the H is the uh, 4.5 meters. Okay, um, part two, the bubble has volume V1 when it's 4.5 meters below. Assume the temperature of the air in the bubble remains constant. In terms of V1, calculate the volume of the bubble when it's just below the surface of the water. Okay, um, so let's call this pressure one. Um, pressure two is when we're just below the surface is uh, PATM plus zero, right? It's rho GH, but you're just below the surface. The H is zero. Um, so we're going to have a difference in pressure um, when we go from... Uh, 4.5 meters below to zero meters below the surface. Okay, um, so if my pressure is changing, what's happening to my volume? And that sounds like ideal gas law. So we would use P1 V1 equals P2 V2, and we would solve for our new uh, volume. V2 equals P1 V1 over P2. That's it. Question three, if the air in the bubble cooled as it rose, um, the volume of the bubble will be less than the volume calculated. Use physics principles to explain why. So that's uh, PV equals NRT. Okay. Um, so for part two, it says assume the temperature remains constant. So if T remains constant, and R remains constant because it is a constant, and N remains constant because that's just the number of molecules in it, and the number of molecules is going to stay the same, um, then we just have the PV equals constant. Right, so P1V1 equals P2V2 because PV equals constant. But this is saying what if the temperature, um, the bubble cools. So if the temperature drops, then PV would decrease, okay? Um, and since we know that the pressure is decreasing by uh, P1 over P2, the volume would decrease even more, right? If your temperature decreases, your volume is going to decrease even more, okay? Um, so using ideal gas law, we would say the volume decreases even more. Um, you could also use kinetic theory to describe the answer. So to do that, you would say that as the temperature drops, um, the molecules are moving slower, which means uh, fewer, slower collisions with the water, um, which is going to be cause an unbalanced force. The water is going to push in on the uh, air until it's balanced. All right, and that one was a tough one, just putting that out there. All right, here's a Bernoulli question. Um, this is a pretty standard Bernoulli question, but um, I like it because it's qualitative. Okay, um, here, here we have student. Okay, we have point A, we have some uh, pressure, and the students disagree about the water pressure and speed at point B. They make the following claims, and we have to uh, evaluate their claims. Um, so student Y says the pressure at point B is greater than point A because the water is moving faster at point B. Okay, um, so we know using the continuity equation that A1 
B2 equals A2, V2, um, we're getting more narrow at point B. That means the velocity is going to be higher at point B. Okay, um, so when student Y says water is moving faster, that's correct. Okay, um, indicate any aspects of student Y's claims that are incorrect. He says that um, pressure at point B is greater because it's going faster. But Bernoulli says pressure plus uh, half rho V squared plus rho G Y is constant. So Bernoulli says that when V increases, um, you have to have a corresponding decrease in pressure and or height. Um, and since the height is increasing, right, when we go from A to B, the Y is increasing, um, that means the pressure has to decrease, okay? Um, so moving faster is going to lead to lower pressure. Um, so that's something incorrect about student Y. Um, student Z says the claim is, uh, the speed at water at point B is less than point A um, because of conservation of energy. Um, so we know that the speed is greater because we already talked about that, the continuity equation. Um, but he does say conservation of energy, some of the water's kinetic energy has been converted to potential energy. Um, and that part is correct. I mean, the uh, Bernoulli equation is a statement of conservation of energy. Um, so basically, we're, we're in terms of conservation of energy, we have an increase in kinetic, uh, so Ke increases. We have an increase in potential because our height's increasing. Um, this is done by work from the fluid. Um, there's a pressure here. Um, pressure is force over area. Um, and that force is pushing it over a distance. That's work. Okay, so um, that term, the work term in Bernoulli is the uh, pressure. The pressure is the work. Um, so, yeah, you would say it's, it's correct that there is a conversion of different energies, um, but it's incorrect that the speed of the water is less at point B. The speed will be greater at point B. Okay, the energy comes from the work of the pressure. All right, here's a thermal question. Um, I'm going to skip that paragraph and go right to the question. Uh, the students want to create a graph to yield a straight line whose slope could be used to calculate the thermal conductivity of the plastic. Okay, thermal conductivity, that's our Q over T equals Ka delta T over L. Okay, um, so we want some, we want the slope of our graph to be K. So K equals uh, Q over T L over A delta T. Um, so if I want to create a graph where the slope could give you my K, um, so remember slope is uh, rise over run or delta Y over delta X. So this would be my Y axis and this would be my X axis. That's it. Um, all right, piece of cake. Um, there was also a part of this uh, question where you actually had to make the graph. Okay, indicate one potential problem with the setup that could lead to an experimental value for the thermal conductivity. Um, the big one that I see um, is that we have a hot plate, we have ice, um, but what about any energy coming out the sides here, right? We, we're definitely sending energy up into the ice, but some of that energy is going to be coming out the sides there. Um, I think that would be the big one. Um, another source of error is um, the ice is in the room. So there's heat coming in from the room. Okay, there's definitely exchanges of heat aside from what um, is shown. Um, the rectangle part's easy, easy. The rectangle below represents a side view of the plastic slab for a single arrow representing the direction of net flow. All right, heat goes from hot to cold, hot plate into the ice, so up. All right, another thermal question, PV diagrams. Um, calculate the force that the gas exerts on the piston in state A. 
and explain how the collisions of the gas atoms with the piston allow the gas to exert a force on the piston. Okay, um, so calculate the force that the gas exerts on the piston. Um, so remember, this is a PV diagram that gives us pressure and volume. If we want force, uh, pressure is equal to force over area, and they give us the area. All right, so that's easy. We're at point A, so the pressure is 1 times 10 to the 5 PA. The area is given, and we can solve for the force. Um, explain how the collisions of the gas atoms with the piston allow the gas to exert a force on the piston. Okay, um, so it's basically, uh, I mean, this is my piston. Okay, the gas atoms, they bounce off of it. All right, that collision, there's an equal and opposite reaction from Newton's third law. Um, so if the uh, molecule bounces back this way, the piston bounces back that way, and we get a force on the piston. All right, um, calculate the temperature of the gas in state B, okay? Um, so that's just ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. Um, so T equals PV over NR, okay? The pressure and volume we get right from the uh, diagram. The pressure is 1 times 10 to the 5. The volume's 0.1 cubic meters. N is the number of moles, two moles. And R is a constant you can get from the reference table. Okay, um, indicate the microscopic property of the gas that is characterized by the temperature. Okay, um, temperature relates to average average kinetic energy of the gas of the gas molecules. Okay, um, part B predict qualitatively how the internal energy of the gas changes as it's taken from state A to state B, justify your prediction. Um, so remember, if we're, okay, PV equals NRT. Okay, all else being equal, if I increase my pressure or increase my volume, I'm gonna lead to an increase in temperature, right? Because everything else is being equal. Um, so when I go from A to B, we're increasing volume at the same so we're increasing volume, well, pressure stays the same, N stays the same, R stays the same. That means if the left side of the equation is increasing, the right side has to increase, so T has to increase. Okay, not only does it have to increase, it has to increase by the same factor that the uh, volume increased. So volume increased by, uh, it increased by 150%, by 0.1 over 0.04. So it's uh, 2.5 times as much. So the temperature is going to be 2.5 times as much. Okay, calculate the energy added to the gas by heating as it's taken from state A to state C alongside the path ABC. Okay. All right. Um, so calculate the energy added to the gas. So delta U equals Q plus W, right? Um, there's two ways we're adding energy here. Um, we're either adding heat or we're doing work on it, okay? Um, now we go along ABC, so we're going like that and then like that, okay? Um, when we go from A to B, um, actually the uh, work is going to be negative because we're expanding. Um, so the gas is doing work on its surroundings. So W is going to be negative and it's negative of the area, right? And so the area would be this rectangle here. Okay, so work equals negative uh, 1 times 10 to the 5 pascals times um, 0 0.6, 0 0.06, 0 0.06 cubic meters. Okay, um, so that's going to be your work. And make, again, make sure it's negative. Um, we're solving for Q. So the other thing we need is the delta U um, so this one's a little bit tricky. Um, so I know that the temperature is increasing when I go from A to C, right? Um, temperature is increasing, yeah. Temperature is, well, changing, okay? Um, so we got the temperature at state B, but we need the change in temperature at A and C. Um, all right, so we need the temperature at state A and C, and we're going to do it the same way we did it at state B. Um, it's uh, PV equals NRT. 
right? And uh, so T equals PV over NR. Okay, again, we know the number of moles, it's two. Um, we know the pressure and the volume. You're going to have to do it twice. You're going to have to do it for state A and state C. Um, unfortunately, that only gives you the change in temperature. Okay, but um, temperature relates to the average kinetic energy of the gas using um, K equals 3 halves KBT. Right? Um, so if I know, so delta K equals 3 halves KB delta T. Okay, if we know our change in temperature, we can find our change in kinetic energy or average kinetic energy. Um, unfortunately, that's only the change in kinetic energy for each molecule or each average molecule. Um, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to multiply that by the number of molecules. Um, do we know how many molecules there are? Yes, we do, um, because we know there's two moles, and we know in one mole it's the, uh, you know, Avocado's number of uh, molecules in a mole. Um, so we would have to do that and solve for the number of molecules. It's the number of molecules in a mole times two. Um, solve for the average change in energy for each molecule using this equation, and solve for the change in temperature using this equation twice. So this is a, this is a very involved question. Um, it's a lot of steps. Oh, and then when you do that, that only gives you delta U, and then we had to get the W also, and then we use that to solve for Q. So yeah, that's a that's a big it's um, a big question. Um, I mean, if this question's it's 20 minutes, it's a lot of steps just for that part of it. The other, so another thing to keep in mind: some of these parts of these questions, like this one, part I, that was that took like a minute. Okay. Um, whereas this one, this does, this isn't more points, this, right? Um, so make sure you get as many points as you can on these early ones, and some of them just take a lot more work. Okay. Part C: Determine the change in total kinetic energy of the gas atom, so it goes from state C to state A. Um, so that's going to be a little easier than the last one. It's basically just this, and since we already solved. For a lot of these, it would be a lot easier. Um, you wouldn't have to do all the work again. Okay, um, but that's how you do these. So notice that uh, you know one, two, and three were very easy, but this one and this one, there was a lot more to them. Okay. All right. If you have any questions, uh, email me or come to office hours and uh, we'll go over some electricity stuff and some more videos.